overall, I think there's a number of lines of evidence that point to the fact that DNA damage could very potently drive aging. And one is these accelerated aging uh, diseases or progerias that are seen in humans as then faithfully recapitulated in genetically engineered mice. Another thing that's becoming abundantly clear is that when we use genotoxic chemotherapy or radiation therapy to treat cancer, it leads to accelerated aging of these cancer survivors. So it's known now that a 50 year old um, who is a cancer survival has two and a half times greater incidence of age related diseases than a sibling that never had cancer. So this includes neurocognitive decline, cardiac disease, insulin resistance, um, and they become quite frail actually, and they have a decline in function. So gait speed and grip strength. So they really do functionally look like a frail older adult. So um, older organisms tend to have more DNA damage than younger. So this is true if endogenous oxidative lesions are measured. This is true in a number of tissues that have been reported on and in a variety of different um, species, mice, rats, hammer, hamsters, and even humans. But I wanna point out that these are a little bit limited because they're only cross-sectional studies and we really don't have measures of DNA damage longitudinally in individuals as they age. Another piece of evidence is that the consequences of genome instability are also increased with age. So older individuals will have more mutations and more senescent cells, which are consequences of DNA damage. And these can be chromosomal aberrations, transpositions, point mutations in a variety of different tissues in virtually every model organism or even humans that have been studied. And what's really important is you can suppress the number of mutations or senescent cells by doing anything that's an intervention that's known to extend lifespan. So for instance, caloric restriction will prevent senescence and mutations, suggesting that the way caloric restriction might work in part to extend lifespan is to suppress DNA damage. You will also find in the literature reports that decreased DNA repair capacity occurs with aging, but I would say the jury is still out on that. I don't think the evidence is particularly strong. So aging, what is it? It's very easy to recognize, but very hard to define. But Thomas Kirkwood, who is a thought leader in aging genetics for quite a number of years, stated that aging results from the accumulation of unrepaired cellular and molecular damage through evolved limitations in somatic maintenance and repair functions. And if I read that statement, it screams DNA repair to me because there is abundance of DNA damage and we have very robust repair functions arguing that maintaining genome stability is of utmost importance and therefore could prevent uh, the aging process. And in the field of aging, this has led to definition of pillars or hallmarks of aging. And these are things that virtually always go wrong with aging. And they include accumulation of macromolecular damage, like DNA damage, epigenetic changes, which is also DNA damage to some extent, inflammation, which can drive DNA damage, altered adaptation to stress, like genotoxic stress, problems with proteostasis, which is harder to lead uh, uh, linked to genome instability, stem cell problems, um, which can be because of genome instability in uh, stem cells, and altered metabolism, which I will show you can result from too much DNA damage. But an important point about these pillars is they're all interconnected. So we began to ask questions about how is it that macro, macro molecular damage to the genome could influence all these other pillars of aging? So in fact, what we were asking is, what is the mechanism by which DNA damage drives aging? So we have these ERCC1 deficient mice that spontaneously accumulate physiologically relevant levels and types of genotoxic stress, like the cyclopurine addicts. And what we typically think about in the uh, world of DNA damage and repair is, when you have too much DNA damage, this will lead to cell fate decisions. But this would then argue that DNA damage drives aging exclusively through a cell autonomous mechanism. So you lose functional healthy cells and eventually you would lose regenerative capacity. 
But in the field of aging, there's a very robust body of literature that says that there's cell non-autonomous mechanisms of aging. And the most uh, elegant one of those, I think, is the heterochronic parabiosis studies. So this is when you stitch two animals together, an old one to a young one, and you find that within a matter of weeks, they're sharing a circulation. And what's very intriguing is that young animal is able to rejuvenate the older mouth mouse just by sharing a circulation. And concomitantly, the older mouse is able to age the younger mouse just by sharing their blood. So this clearly illustrates the cell non-autonomous mechanisms of aging through paracrine signals, the SASP, which is a senescence associated secretory phenotype, inflammation, metabolic changes, endocrine changes. So we wanted to explore these in the context of DNA damage. An important point though is, if you wanted to find a way to treat aging, what you certainly would not wanna do is try to inhibit these cell autonomous cell fate decisions because these are very potent tumor suppressor mechanisms that prevent replication of a damaged genome leading to genome instability and the possibility of cancer. Whereas cell non-autonomous mechanisms of aging could be much more druggable to slow the aging process. So again, of keen interest to try and define those. So what happens in a cell with genotoxic stress? Well, it triggers a very elegant, a very complicated DNA damage response referred to as the DDR. So damage is recognized by proteins and leads to a signaling cascade that ultimately will lead to cell apoptosis, arrest of the cell cycle, to afford time to repair the DNA and recover transcription once the genome is repaired, as well as replication. So the DNA damage response includes damage sensors for each of the DNA uh, repair pathways, as well as signal transducers, and then these effectors that lead to action or cell fate decision. And this gets enormously complicated so this is just a very simple uh, illustration of the DNA damage response and the key transducers, which are two kinases, ATM and ATR. And each of those has hundreds, if not thousands of substrates. So they're phosphorylating a number of different proteins to trigger this response to DNA damage. And they also activate P53, which is a transcription factor with hundreds of transcriptional targets. So these transducers will ultimately lead to, at the bottom of the slide, apoptosis signaling, activation of DNA repair mechanisms, and a complete cell cycle arrest that's either transient or permanent. And this is what leads to maintenance of genome stability in the organism. So to wrap up, DNA damage or genotoxic stress, which drives genome instability, occurs frequently and is virtually unavoidable. Endogen sources of genotoxic stress are the most abundant types of DNA damage that drive genome instability. All organisms have multiple robust and highly conserved mechanisms by which to repair their DNA damage. But unfortunately, repair is never 100% complete or is it ever perfect? So repair can generate other problems, but also eventually DNA damage does increase in old age. There is very strong evidence to support the conclusion that genome instability contributes to aging and DNA damage contributes to aging through cell autonomous and non-autonomous mechanisms that ultimately impact other pillars of aging. And areas of genome instability that are potentially targetable to slow the aging process would be doing what you can to avoid or prevent DNA damage. So not sunburning, not smoking, avoiding some fatty foods that are charbroiled. Also, we'd love ways to improve DNA repair, but right now I have to say that's a little bit of a lark. There just aren't chemicals that can do that or drugs. And those pathways are so complex, it's hard to um, rev up DNA repair endogenously. But what we can do is deal with the fates that DNA damage drives. So senescent cells are one really key target that can be druggable to prevent um, aging caused by DNA damage. And I just say that if you'd like to learn more, um, I would encourage you to look at DNA repair and mutagenesis, which is the, really the Bible of understanding genome stability. 
and um, the consequences of DNA damage. So thank you very much for your attention.